think we talked about in the class, right? What is success? And like the, I'll go out and say the, the controversial statement, right? Of like, everyone will always talk about how success is different to everybody. And we talked about it and I saw you guys nodding because I know you vibe with what I said. Success is the exact same thing for every single person in the world. It's just a feeling, right? It's just a feeling of fulfillment. That's what success is. It's the same for everyone. <laughs> I'm expecting, I don't know. I actually said this on the way over, right? I was saying like, I can't wait to hear what the questions are, what we're going to talk about. Because like, I always get intrigued with people like either what they want to know from, from me or what they want to discuss. Because like, we kind of know each other for a long time, but like not really known each other, if that makes right. sense. Like, people forget how long like relationships have been building from. So like, it's cool to actually get a chance to sit and talk to you properly. So we've never really had that chance. What's going on everyone, it's your boy Lowe's Cut It, and you're in the cut with today's guest. Unfortunately, my boy Ruben, baby, or Chapa is not here today, he's filming a movie, but we got the next best thing, the homie Kendrick. But before we get to Kendrick, I want to introduce our main guest today. Um, he's one of the very, very few names that I mention when people ask me, who is your favorite barber slash stylist? Um, it's an honor to have my man here, all the way from UK, Mr. Barber Josh OP. What's up, Josh? What's up, guys? My name is Joshua Marie Patel, as Lo said, and I am honestly honored to be here. Like, thank you for the kind words because, like, for me, that is completely reciprocated and more so of mentality mm -hmm. than just art. Like, I love what you do as an artist, but what you're building, being here today, just the whole thing, the whole studio you got. How do phenomenal. you like headquarters, man? Phenomenal. Like, it's honestly, like, this is what we're trying to say when we're trying to say that everyone can inspire everyone. Like, mm -hmm. for people like ourselves, people would look at people with our platforms and probably think that, we're just too busy doing our own thing but like right. we look at each other and see inspiration from that Thanks. and i think being here today is making me super inspired to <sighs> to bring some of this vibe back to our academy back in the uk and make it more of a show it's, you know you know what really blew my mind is that when i, I was i just seen you in london like two weeks ago right mm -hmm. was it last week two weeks yeah right? about two weeks ago and being over there mind you to me i'm on the other side of the world bro yeah and people are coming up to me like, yo, man, headquarters, bro. It looks dope. I seen first it. Time in london Sick. yeah first time yeah. so i'm meeting people that i obviously never got to meet and I'm just like, oh, shit, you know about headquarters? And they're like, yeah, I've been following you since this. And I'm like, wow, so that's crazy to me. Uh, but before we carry on with this conversation, I want to introduce Mr. Kendrick. Who is Mr. Kendrick and what does he do for you or what does he do, do with you? So honestly, Kendrick is Whoa. like started as a student essentially the, the worst like, student the, the let, word, let, him, let the him know let student. him know the worst okay student. so when, when i first met Kendrick, to say he couldn't hold scissors is an understatement like this guy couldn't literally hold scissors in his hands but put his wrong finger in the in the in the holes and whatever right so <laughs> <laughs> but like and then from there he's progressed into one of my best friends over time uh again down to like a mentality thing it was like Whenever we had the opportunity for for him to learn, he'd be there. Like he took mm. like four courses with us, wow. right? And we saw huge progression within that. We always had a good vibe, we always had a good time, but he was so determined to grow. And I just loved the mentality he had and the honesty he had in knowing where he was at and where he wanted to be. Um, and so that like just kind of transpired into then, I remember he came to the Tampa class last year, right? And, and when we were discussing at the end of the class, I was like, I got these classes coming up. And like, he was like, can I come? Nice. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, well, can I come and just help? It's like, I'll just help you. And yeah. I was like, well, if you want to come and help and then he invested his own money, spend his own money to get a flight, get hotels, come and just assist on classes. Relentless. Man. Yeah. And that's what he's doing here this week in Chicago. So it's just like... And look, it ended up on the podcast. Yeah. Our, our guest host couldn't make it. And Relentless. you know what? <laughs> For those of you guys that don't know, I'm um, Josh is in the U.S. now. He's got his U.S. tour, uh, which is amazing. This is day two. We just finished it. Literally just finished it a couple hours ago, yeah. and we're here today right now. Um, I got to tell you, bro. Like, honestly, Jay -Z, I came here, and Jay-Z was like, yo, how was it? Was it worth it? And I'm like, bro, that class could have just been yesterday, <laughs> and that would have been worth it to me because Sick. the things that I got just learning off something you created. Mm -hmm. and, and I got to be honest with you. I didn't know that. I, I, I knew the concept that you were building your own educational program. I knew the concept of everything you had going on. But, you know, just like we're so far into what we're doing that I don't really pay. I pay enough yeah, attention yeah, yeah. to know, but I don't really dig into a lot of stuff. So I was aware of what you were doing, but I, I didn't know for sure until I actually got there. And I noticed that what you're teaching, no one can do. This is you, what you yeah. created, um, which one is amazing, bro, because you literally reinvented the wheel. It's like me literally coming out and saying, hey, guys, I'm going to do a fade class, a class that no one's ever taught you or showed you. And I'm gonna share it with you. And you know, it's something you're like, no way. What can you do that people like Vidal Sassoon and people like 
uh, the whole, like, everyone who's anybody in the industry hasn't taught us. Mm -hmm. And just watching you, mind you, I got 24 years in this industry. Mm -hmm. We've seen each other at major shows where some of the best yep. of the best are. And to see something that I've never seen was like, and to get blown away, I was like, holy crap. <laughs> so when I heard Kendrick speak, he was very well spoken. You, you said it yourself. You said, when I seen it, I had to have it. And yeah. that wasn't referred to the program, the, the the education, the cutting, everything. And when when I heard when I heard your little presentation, I was like, oh, dude, let me get you on the guest because I knew my other guy wasn't gonna be here, mm -hmm. and we need a that's third so, person. That's so crazy. It's so crazy. I appreciate you saying I'm well spoken because <laughs> literally last year I used to talk to Josh about like my speech problems and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it you want to get the mic a little closer? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. It's just something I used to always worry about, like. I don't know if it's because like my country accent or sometimes I just like I think so fast mm -hmm. as just like the way I process things and sometimes it's just kind of hard to slow down but bro it's some shit I literally been working on for a year. Oh, sorry for cussing guys my bad, my bad. I don't know. Yeah. um but it's literally something I've been working on for a year like I, I'm relentless in my art and I'm also relentless in myself as growing mm -hmm. as a person so like literally after me sitting there talking to you guys I, in the day I went to Josh I said I spoke very well today Mm -hmm. And it's he actually did. something I used to have. I probably, he did. I probably this time last year, when he did a similar thing, like got in front of the class uh, and started to sort of deliver a bit of a speech of who he was and kind of how the program helped him, he was saying it, but he was like head down, like thinking yeah, yeah. about what he was saying. He went on for ages, <laughs> like because he was kind of like going kind of down a rabbit hole of yeah. like, like I know to it, save yourself. Yeah, You're I know it's all him. inside him, but he wasn't able to kind of get it out properly. Whereas you obviously worked a lot on that. And I know you've been teaching classes now too. Yeah. Um, which has obviously helped within that. So it's great to see, like, for me, like, I just love seeing your growth. And I think that our relationship as friends kind of sums up everything we're trying to build. Like, everyone who's involved in our team, and obviously I'm presuming we'll get onto some of this stuff in a bit, but everyone who's involved in our team has essentially come from a place when they came to the classes, did kind of what you did and was like, oh, shit, what <laughs> you're actually doing is different. Like, because yeah. I've been trying to say to everyone for the longest time, like, you go anywhere else in the world, you learn precision cutting from anyone else in the world, and they will teach you their version of the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's the same process, mm -hmm. right? The exact same ways of cutting hair is kind of two. You either have a profile guide and you work out from that, mm -hmm. or you just pick up hair and cut it, right? Essentially, yeah. that's the kind of only two ways to do it. Then there's us. And like, it's been a wild, wild ride. And people are kind of at the moment now starting to see that there was truth in what I was saying. Like, it's going to help you. It's easier. It's logical. It's efficient. It's not to say that it's better because obviously every process works differently for everyone. Mm -hmm. And some people will probably find other ways still better. But I think for the mass majority of barbers, I'm going to say it, it's better. Well, <laughs> if you don't have, I'll say it, it's better. Honestly, look, there's a list of people that I have on my list that I, I just need to learn from. There's, mm -hmm. you know, some people that I just know personally, yeah. but I've never seen, I've never had an opportunity to sit and take a class. You made me not care anymore. <laughs> I'm not even, you think I'm lying. And you know what? I'm, I'm real big on closed mouths not being fed and, and always speak up and be real. Be honest with yourself yeah. and be honest with people. To me, I was, I was talking to one of the guys in, at, at the class today and I was like, I got to figure out how to, how to get on this American team. Because <laughs> mind you, with all my experience and my creativeness, I could only imagine once I fully understand what, what it is that you're teaching, how I can implement my creative mm -hmm. to that skill set. 100%. Like so, I've seen some of your cuts before and thought like, sick. <laughs> and I'm, what are you working with the creativity to fade in sick? But I'm always the kind of person where I'll be like, how could how could the process potentially make it better mm. and improve it? And I've looked at it and gone like, there's some stuff when you're trying to create, when you're creating shape and it, the image looks sick. And I'm like, if you could do that with our process, I know you'd find it easier to do. Oh. And it's not just a case of that you, like I'm looking at it going, it's not good enough yet. It's not, it's like, it, it looks sick. And I know you would find it more free and you would have more freedom over the control of what you're doing with the scissor part of it mm -hmm. to know how to control it. What's crazy is that I I could replicate any haircut, but it would be a struggle. And like mm -hmm. you were saying, you can do a lot of things, but the important part is knowing why you're doing it. Exactly. And it's probably I, I probably could replicate a sick haircut that he did, but I wouldn't I couldn't be able to tell you why or I was, how. I, was, I think that's natural as an artist when you look mm -hmm. at somebody else's work. You look yeah. at it and be like this is sick, I would have done this. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But, and that's the thing we say in our classes. So I think one of the things that does surprise people a lot, and I think this is the thing that like, even on the short kind of conversation we've ever had, I've known that you've got a similar mindset to me, yeah. but I think that people kind of get very surprised in how yeah, transparent and open we are mm -hmm. as an education brand. And yeah. we're very much from the start kind of going like, look, we just want to make you better at being you. Like you're like, as a student, you don't, you shouldn't 
Most people go to classes, right, to find out how to be like the person they're going to watch. Yeah, That's what they're there for. They're like, okay, I'm seeing him. He's inspiring me or she's inspiring me. And I want to go and learn how to do that. But in reality, that's the false, that's the wrong mindset to have going in. You want to go and go like the information I can learn is going to help me to be a better me. Yeah. And I think that's what we're trying to help people to kind of get on board with. It's like, you're not here to learn how I do what I do. You're here to learn how you can do what you do better. Mm. And that's the phrase I've said so many times. People are sick of hearing me saying it, but it's so true. It goes further. It's it goes so further. true. Yeah. Because no, the, point, the, point, the point that when they get to trying to do something, just trying to replicate what something yeah. that you've done and they don't get the, that result. It's they the fulfillment. Fail, right? But that's the thing we talked about in the class, right? What is success? And like the, I'll go out and say the, the controversial statement, right? Of like, everyone will always talk about how success is different to everybody. And we talked about it and I saw you guys nodding because I know you vibe with what I said. Success is the exact same thing for every single person yeah, in the world. Bro. It's just a feeling, right? It's just a feeling of fulfillment. That's what success is. It's the same for everyone. How you get it can be completely different, Thanks. completely up to you. Yeah. There's so many, you need to find how you get success, not what success is. Thanks. And so when people are talking about trying to get that journey and find their success, find what success is, people are searching for the wrong thing. It's like literally like, <laughs> they're going to get lost because they're searching for a thing, mm -hmm. but it's a feeling mm -hmm. and it's something that they get every day and they ignore the feeling because they're searching for a thing. Yeah. That's As you said, it's like success is a, it's a feeling, like just embrace the feeling, learn to feel that at any given time and you'll be successful. Yeah, with, with yourself and your own goals for sure. That way you can go on a journey just yeah. with yourself. Instead with of anything, it. if you can learn to be like, as you said, making your bed, right? Yeah. Something so simple as that. If you can learn to feel the sex success from actually making your bed, that's success. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just a success. feeling. I do that. It's the smallest goal that yeah. can make it like lit, like like the uh, reference you made, like with a smile. Mm -hmm. my, me making my bed is my smile. Yeah. Success breeds success. And then you get home at night, right before you go to bed, you got your bed all made. Yeah. For whatever reason, yeah. it feels that much better. Yeah. It's your first so goal much cozier. Like, yeah, like cozier. First, yeah. first goal done. Hey, I made my bed for the day. You know, yeah. that, that leads you for exactly. Yeah. And you, like you said, you come home and then, bro, it's just like, oh yeah. Cause I got some waiting for me when I get home. Some mm -hmm. stuff that, that, that. You're proud of yourself at the end yeah, of the day. You're yeah, like, but, yeah, yeah. but that, that's why I was I'm, I was glad when I was sitting there in the beginning and and then um, I forgot his name. The kid he comes up to you. He was like, man, look, I'm having trouble trying to figure out your ways because mm -hmm. that means like I have to sh pretty much shift everything I'm doing to learn what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, you don't. Exactly. You could just learn it and apply what you need. And we broke it down. And and, and it's true. It's just a lot of people I think in this industry do feel like. Or maybe not feel like they know everything, but are just content with what they know. And mm -hmm. then they try to make their living off just that without trying to expand. And I think what it is, is that a lot of the time that people like, and this is what we talked about in the opening of the class about security and freedom, right? And then we talked about our process will give you the security first that a process should give, but it also gives you the freedom to create with it and to really cater what you're doing to suit the individual that, whose hair you're cutting. Mm -hmm. But I think that what a lot of people are looking for is just pure security. And so at the moment, someone like that would have the security of knowing that their process at the moment works. This is so different, it's going to disrupt it, mm -hmm. right? And so like to learn it, it's got to learn a whole different mindset, a whole different way of thinking. And I think there, they start to get kind of unstuck because they get focused on the idea of like, so it working for them rather than them being able to use it. Mm. So it's like the, you, you're with a process mostly, with every, whatever it is in life, whatever it is, like it might not have to be barbering, but most people want to know that they can just trust that to do the work for them. Mm. And so if you think about what would traditionally be classed as precision cutting, most of that method is about just do this step, then this step, then this step. It's very sterile, very sort of like robotic almost mm. into just being like that will just create that rather than being able to allow people to understand why it creates it. Like why did pulling the hair to here allow for that shape? Like that then gives you the freedom to know that it isn't that process that created it. It's the fact that the hair goes from here to here and then goes from here to here and then from here to here. That then produces the shape. 100%. Dude, the, everything you taught me these last two days has been mind-blowing. It's just like I had a, some of the guys in there like, Los, I can't believe you're here. And I'm like, I can't believe no one else is here. What do you mean? You can't believe wow. I'm here. I, you know how many, you know how many killers I know in Chicago that can cut hair amazing? Wow. Not Obviously not that amazing, like your level. So to me, it's like, why aren't they here? So don't don't be shocked that I'm here. Mm -hmm. Be shocked that your your other Chicago I, I idols are. I look here. at you different after that in a good way. It's, yeah, it says a lot about you as a person. It says a lot about you. I already knew I I felt that from you as a person anyway, but it says a lot about you that you just literally like, yeah, I'm gonna take the class. Yeah, no shame. Yeah, exactly. Because you shouldn't be though. 
It shouldn't be at all. No, no. I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm, I thought you were just pulling up at first. I'm like, oh, cool, Los Hill. Nah, Josh, bro. Josh is, I, look, cool. man. But then I, I seen you with the pen and the paper. I'm like, bro, listen. Oh, shit. Okay, let's I, get I, it. How old are you, Kendrick? 28. I'm 28. 20, okay, so you're not you're not too young. Young Thundercat. Josh, how old are you? 28. Oh, dang. You guys are 35, right? Do really? not look it, bro. I would not. Oh, said you, dang. I would have thought we were the same age. Earlier, yeah, I, I overheard you telling somebody, uh, it's chapter 24. Yeah. Right? I was like, years. So nah, guy killing it, hell, bro. I wish, bro. If I was 24, the way right now, like, plays like this. Lose is 24, killing it. But bro. I was like, dang. I've learned, man, in my years. You're still killing it, though. No thank you, bro. Appreciate it. No. To put that ego aside, man. Put that mm -hmm. pride aside, um, and share, share information, and, and that's one thing you're doing because I can tell just by watching your class, you're not beating around a bush. You're not just no. doing this to get paid. No. You know, you're not. There's a lot of people that they'll sit here and, and pull a gimmick of a class or educational. And just teach what's already been taught. Mm -hmm. You share everything. And I'm a big believer in that. When I, when I do any of my classes, I have to give you everything that I've ever came, any problem I've ever came across. Mm -hmm. Not only am I going to tell you what the problem is and what it was to relate to you, I'm also going to show you how I overcame that problem. Exactly. So now i become relatable. And one thing you did, man, a lot of things you said, and I was telling some of the guys, I was like, look, um, Josh didn't really necessarily tell me something I didn't already know. But he told me in his own words, in his own way, that opened up my vision in a lot mm -hmm. of things. Because a lot of the psychological things you said, I, I that's how I think. Yeah. yeah. And I'm nodding my head every time you're saying something, but your your anal analogies are different. Mm -hmm. Your experiences are different. And mm -hmm. I'm just like, you're just show, you're just making it. And what I love about is how you opened up your class, because to someone that's never, who doesn't have any years behind the chair, it's probably like, why are we talking about this? I want to mm -hmm. cut here. But to me, I saw the importance part. of getting... Bro, I've never wrote goals down like that. And exactly. now... I, I, point proven. I say yeah. this all the time. Yeah. For most people on that, that's the first time they ever write down their goals in a formal structure and a plan and how they're going to get there. A hundred percent. So that made me feel real good. But real quick, before we go any further, man, Josh, I told you I was, I was uh, watching you cut hair. I didn't know whose tools you were using. Mm -hmm. Were they Kendrick's? Mm -hmm. yeah, Kendrick's? So. so I was just like, damn, not a single Babyliss Clipper in <laughs> sight. I was like, what the hell is up with that? So um, I made a quick call and I made some quick moves. So shout out to Babyliss. Babyliss is sponsoring this episode. Um, not guys. only do I want to bless you for your, with your own American tools, but I also wanted to bless you with um, a couple things that are my personal items. And Rick, let me get them. I, was, I know I told you to get them to Josh. That's crazy. But I kind of want to break some things down. So, huh, bro. so this is a pre-release. You can give, no, you can bring the clipper too. Uh, this is a pre-release thing that I, I plan on having sometime in November. Mm -hmm. um, the brand, I'm sure you've already seen, a lot of people seen it, is mm -hmm. the GOAT brand. It's, it's, it's such a simple but very powerful so. uh, logo. And I want to break it down to the world. I want to break it down to you. This logo doesn't represent Los Cut It. This has nothing mm -hmm. to do with me. This represents my mindset. Sick. Uh, my, the reason why I created this logo is because for so many years, like the last two, three years that I've been doing work, I would get so many GOAT comments. And people would be like, GOAT, 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 GOAT. And I never claimed that. I never like walking around saying, hey, I'm better than... Supposed to Did you know it what it meant, though? They, they, because they I had that once, people. and I honestly had to Google what it was. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, like, oh, I, I'm in Chicago, dude. Michael Jordan, the GOAT, the greatest yeah. ever. So yeah. I've been I on with no the GOAT. Idea. So I never claimed it, but I claimed that everybody saw me like that. Mm -hmm. Because it was just a way to justify how I think and how I work. Sick. And now what I do, I created this brand to give it to you, to everybody who I think is considered a GOAT in your wow. own. So every time you wear this brand, you're not wearing Los Cut It. You're wearing a message that says that you are the greatest person you can be. Mm -hmm. And you're always evolving. So I wanted to give right. I just need to know what size you are, large or medium. Uh, oversized. Is it, does it fit oversized? It's oversized. Uh, medium. And That's crazy, bro. All right, I got it. It's a medium. So not only that, they come with all these type of GOAT rubber bands, pretty Sick. much. I know you're an all-black dude, so nice yeah. little goat roller bands, and then I told you I got you on a nice little goat skelly to take back home. And on top of that, you see that clipper next to you? Sick. That's you, baby. Bro. Hey. And, and, hey. and I got you the trimmer. Bro. Hey. And I got wow. you the trimmer, bro. Bro. So... I don't know how to thank you for that. That's oh, you amazing. ain't got to thank me, man. You think Babyliss. You could, you could tag <laughs> them. <laughs> you could thank you, Babyliss. No, and, and it, honestly, though, facts are I've literally used Babyliss my entire life. When I'm on tour sometimes, I just have to kind of get what I can get uh, because of, like, luggage and whatnot and weight. But, bro, I appreciate that a lot. Thank no, of you course, so man. Much. You don't you don't have to pull thank them you, out bro. tomorrow or anything like that. If you want to, feel free. Yeah, bro. Uh, but this is just more 
you did mention you were gonna you plan on something doing something next uh, big next year. I don't want to me- bring it up before you do. Um, <laughs> I don't know if that's even something you want to talk about. But no, hundred percent. I wanted to have that. you set good while you're out here. No, bro, I appreciate that. Like, honestly, that means a lot. And to be honest, I really vibe with the with the logo what you're talking about because and as you're probably aware, and this is where our mindsets align a lot, right? Mm-hmm. We were just because about from the the start of the class, what we're opening up, right? One of the things I always talk to, to barbers about uh, is the idea of understanding that they are the best, right? And one of the ways that I help them understand that they are the best is talking about their clients. Because I think people don't realize and appreciate that they are you are the best you could ever be, right? Even on your worst day, to some people you're the best, right? And in reality, as long as you know you're giving it your all, you were the best you could have ever been. You learn from it, you move, you grow, whatever. But if like barbers were to go and ask their clients, right? And they were to talk to them about like, who they think the best barber in the world is, right? All their clients would say them. Yeah, of course. Like whoever course. you are in the world. And like one of the activities I've been doing or sort of like things I've been doing with students, like when if I do like a, a bigger show, right? Is I've been doing this thing where I get them to essentially pull out their phones, right? And I want them to share a moment, not just with me, but share a moment with themselves that they can keep forever, right? And so I get them to pull out their phones uh, and I get them to put it on record. But instead of recording me, because it what happens a lot of shows, I get them to record themselves, right? They get them to record themselves and they get them to close their eyes. And this is something that I like in the UK, I used to get laughed at for doing stuff like this. But it's, mm-hmm. for me, it's, it's about bringing positivity and appreciation of themselves, right? So getting them to record themselves on their phone uh, and close their eyes and they get them to envision. So at this point, they don't know what's happening. And I get them to envision and think about who they think is the best barber in the world, right? Mm-hmm. And so there'll be, there'll be names that we can all think of who they, we know they're probably thinking of, right? And I let them think about whoever they want. It's like, you think about and imagine and picture the best barber in the entire world, right? And at this point, their phone's on, right? Their phone's on and they're recording <laughs> themselves, right? And I tell them to open their eyes and to look at their screen. And then I'm like, okay, so the person looking back at you, that's your answer. Wow. And so then, then they start to go, huh, what? Oh. And then I talk about, like, if you ask your clients, they'll tell you the best barber in the entire world. So you need to feel it, yeah. right? And you need to allow yourself to feel like that. And that's where that meant, that's means a lot to me that like just the logo, everything you explained about it, bro, phenomenal. Like yeah. I really get, I really on board with that. Because I, I do want, and I, and I plan on giving, sending out to all my favorite barbers out there. And you're obviously one of them. And like I said, um, and this is just a clear, this is the first time I, I relay that message because to the world, I'm only, I could only assume that people think I wear the goat because I think <laughs> I walk around better. No, it's just, it's a powerful thing that I could wear personally and I feel good. It's my Gucci. It's but my Louis. The thing Louis, is though, like in reality, God. everyone should be able to walk around with the GOAT logo on thinking that, the, not thinking that a GOAT, like I'm walking around, I'm the best. It should be a case of like appreciating. I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying. Tr- exactly. Yeah, I'm, trying. I'm trying every day to get better, to learn and to appreciate every moment is a lesson. Some teach you how you want to be, some teach you how you don't want to be, but I'm taking every moment that you're going to give me or God has given me or whatever's given me to grow. Yeah, yeah. It's, the, it's the confidence for sure. Exactly. Yeah. So now, now when you wear that, you, you it, it should mean something when you wear it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. So um, one of the things that I took away from your class, dude, that 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 I can relate to a thousand percent, that I don't think a lot of people caught the way I caught mm-hmm. it, was when you were saying like, you have to share these things with your clients because when you share yeah. it and open up with your clients, that's the only way you're gonna get help moving up without mm-hmm. losing people. Exactly. And that's one of the things I do. My clients, I mean, when I was working behind a, uh, behind a chair heavy, we're okay with me not being in town. We're okay with me not being able to mm-hmm. get them in. We're okay with that simply because I was always sharing my enthusiasm about exactly. this show that I got coming up, this class I just took. Oh my God, I just got booked for this show in London I, or in UK or I mean, um, in Dubai or Mexico. So they, they're excited for me and they're like, mm-hmm. yeah, go, go. It's okay, I'll wait a week. I'll, I'll go exactly. to this guy. Where if I didn't do that, I'm just a missing barber. Bro, 100%. Yeah. So when you said that, I guarantee it flew over like half the class. I guarantee. But when I heard that, I'm like, yo, you're 100% right. Mm -hmm. And that's that support system because I've seen a lot of barbers just instantly blow up, zero foundation. Mm -hmm. So when you go up really quick with no foundation, what tends to happen? You fall just as quick. Mm -hmm. So they blow up and they keep it a secret between everybody. They can have the reasons, oh, I don't want to speak because people hate on me, whatever the reason may be. But then what happens when you don't make it you're gonna just you're gonna feel lonely. You're gonna fall right back to that deep mm-hmm. hole. And when you said that, I was like, dude. That's, mm-hmm. And I, this is things that I've been trying to share with people. And at that point, then you might not even have any clients waiting for you. A hundred percent. Because you haven't shared the journey. You haven't shared the reason why. Mm-hmm. And it's the same with cut. If you're educating, cutting hair, or you're just trying to like progress in life, right? Your reason why is your power, right? Thanks. That's your power. That's what's gonna help progress and generate a support network behind you that's gonna help you when you need it the most. And I feel me, I feel like if you can do that and you can build that, 
right? You build an entire community. We've been talking about our online academy, about how we're building a community and essentially curating our own little world outside of the barber industry, right? Mm -hmm. And we've created that. We've now had hair shows. We've had award ceremonies. We've got our own private community. That's a similar thing, right? Most barbers, especially then when they, they don't take their clients with them anyway. So most of them don't talk to their clients about it too much because they kind of get scared. They're going to think they're going to leave, whatever. And then they don't have the client behind them. They're most barbers because Instagram is essentially, from most people's point of view, a contest. And they yeah. they don't consider anyone to be friends. They consider most people to be competition, competition or they just know of people. So one of the reasons why we built the online academy the way we did and we wanted to have people connecting and building a, 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 a friendships and communities was because I said I was sick of seeing people on Instagram knowing of each other. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows of each other, but there's always that stare on a standoffness of like, oh, like I'm not going to fully support him because yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm feeding to his yeah, success. He's probably a dick. He's probably a dick, right? He, that's what they think all the time. <laughs> dick, that's yeah. probably what they, like, people say that about me all the time. They think I'm going to be a massive dick. And then they meet me. I, and I, I'm I like, was <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just like, I'm just trying to help people as much as I can. And I think that then like you not only can then maybe build a clientele behind you who supports what you do and want you to go and grow, then you also can maybe like if you are actually networking and using social media, using events, using like just your general life to network yourself within the industry too, you build a support network of barbers who are like, yeah, go, carry on, you Thanks. kill it, right? You crush it. And as we've said um, a lot, like I think it was a few days ago, like not many people know it, but you was like one of my biggest supporters when I was starting out. Like Thanks, you were man. on the they phone. You, you know what's crazy? I didn't even remember that. I remembered when you brought it up and I'm like, oh yeah, you did. Now you yeah. share that story because I'm glad you remember that because it made me feel good because I was like, that, that's what's up. I did remember when I would bring your name up to people and people were like, oh. You were calling me like, let's yeah. try and get you a class book. Like, it didn't work out back then because we didn't quite have the scope. Like, I didn't necessarily have the, the connections and stuff to really put together a tour mm -hmm. because like for you to, at that point, to just put one on one class, the flights, et cetera, would have been expensive, yeah. right? Yeah. But like, just the idea then when we think about it, like how the world comes around and we're sat here today, Based off of like essentially a phone call like six years ago. That's crazy. It's wild. There you go. You see people like. And that's about that network. You build a support network of people behind you and they will be with you forever. Dude. 100%. And, and, you got to uh, share your dreams. 100%. So this, I wrote a couple of things that, I'm, um, that I just took notes from your class that I wanted to bring up for today. But man, I feel like this conversation is so fluent. Um, one of the things you talked about that I already heard you say a couple of years ago, but it still blows my mind when you brought it up today. You learn how to cut your hair by yourself. <laughs> yeah. Now, let me rephrase that. You learn how to cut hair, not your hair, your hair in general on your own. Yeah. And is, does that feed into why you created your own concept of cutting? Yeah. I think, to be honest, when I first, first started, so like when I very first started cutting hair in my mom and dad's kitchen, I honestly can't remember how like I actually tried. <laughs> like I just was making stuff up, trying to get my head around hair itself, right? Mm -hmm. But I always found like I just had this like kind of way that I just kind of got it. I just kind of got hair. And then, like, I remember I worked in that first shop we talked about where I was doing, like, 30 haircuts a day, right? Mm. Had the, 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 the owner of the shop said to me, if I can't do a haircut in 15 minutes, I can't work there. I was like, as much as I don't want to do that, I don't want that forever. But I was like, at this point, I didn't know any different. So, like, I had to almost learn that I didn't want that forever. Wow. So, like, at first, I was like, okay, cool. Okay, thinking in my head, how can I do this faster? So, I would literally just send apart the haircut, get my number three, run my number three up, Creates block graduation, I'd go from there, right? And mm -hmm. it would be the same, almost a, a less precise version of what we do now. Mm -hmm. Then as I grew and progressed, like at that point, I still couldn't do scissor work, right? I didn't know how to do that, like in terms of on the sides and doing a full scissor cut. But like you just soak up information from everywhere. And what it is and what I'm trying to say to people is everyone has the potential to do that, mm -hmm. right? But not many people study at home. Like study outside of work. Study when they're not cutting hair. Like when I'm cutting hair, that's the least clear my mind will ever be. That's the time when all I can really do is everything I already know how to do mm -hmm. if I want to do a good haircut. And what I would do is I would spend hours and like I'll tell the story about how I do it. We talked about it a little bit in the class. So what I do and I still do this to this day and like my wife that she's doing some work right now so she couldn't be here because otherwise she could literally have verified this. Yeah. I would do this to this day. Every night I would spend at least an hour, sometimes two, essentially studying the day that I just had, right? Mm -hmm. So this helps me with life, business, everything. But I'm gonna talk about it from a cutting hair perspective. So what I would do is, especially way back then, I would write it down, right? Now I'm mostly just on my phone or in my head, right? So I know what I'm doing, but I'm still rehearsing stuff. But what I would do is I'd get my haircuts, right? And I would literally pick, say, like my, say five haircuts from that day. So this is why I'm a massive advocate for taking photos. It doesn't have to be an Instagram photo. You don't have to have a studio. Just get a quick snap of what it looks like. So you can go back and study it. Because if you think about your haircuts in your own mind, you'll always have a negative bias. You'll always think it was worse than it was. You won't remember the good stuff. So what I want people to do is to, what I used to do was look at the haircut, right? And I would say, get the picture. And I would choose 
in my own mind, like sat in a room on my own, choose five things I liked and five things I didn't like. Mm. Because what I would say is I've built this idea, the, the process itself, right? The process itself that we've built, the images that I create when I'm cutting hair, right? They all kind of have their own vibe to it. Like it's mm. got its own thing that we, you know, when you're looking at it, I haven't done that because I thought someone else wanted to see it. Mm. I've done it because I wanted to do it. You and I think that like it, yeah. the phrase I've been using recently is the industry doesn't need what it wants. It needs what it needs. Mm. Like if I wouldn't be saying today, if I did what I thought the industry wanted to see, mm. yeah, because the, 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 the DFS formula, how we cut hair is, as we said, it's the opposite of everything. Thanks. It's so different. So what I would do is I'd pick, okay, what do I actually like? So when I look at this image of my haircut, I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay, what do I like? What don't I like? And then I'd write them down, five things of each. And then for these five things that I've written down, I'd write down why. So every time, why did I like it? Why didn't I like it? Whatever it is. And then when I've written down why, I would think about why do I think it happened? Because there's a difference between why don't I like it and actually how it happened. Mm. So I'd span out further. And then I would go, okay, so for the good stuff, how yeah, can I do it again? Dude, you're out here like solving a fucking a murder on the wall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, like, oh, yeah, yeah, but this yeah. is the thing. If anyone asked me how I got to where I got, it was nothing to do with talent, right? Because when you think about it, every single person who starts to cut hair ever can't cut hair at the start. We all start from the same place. The only reason I ever got to where I got was this self-study. Studying and using information that I could get from everywhere, mm -hmm. right? It wasn't a case of like, I was just sat on my own like some crazy person just things going into my head. Like you'd be in a barbershop, right? You'd you'd maybe see different techniques or you'd, you, you'd see people section hair or doing whatever, right? And it'd be a case of instead of doing what everyone does when they go and copy the thing they saw, I would just take information, think about hair, bring it into a realm where I could study me. Mm -hmm. And this is what most people don't do. They normally, like they're okay to study other people, right? But they don't really use that information properly on themselves. And the thing is, again, you, information is essentially useless unless you use it properly. Mm. Because like, I know so many people who technically are phenomenal at cutting hair. They know so much about hair, but they don't ever study their own haircuts enough to know how to use it, right? So it's a case of you take information from everywhere, do this, build action plans, right? Because now if I've got to build the idea of how could I do this again? How could I do this better next time, right? Next time this dude comes in, I've got an entire action plan written out so that all I need to do is look at it and go, cool, so last week, he came in, I didn't like this, this, and this, and this, right? Mm. So I, I know that I need, I'm focused on these areas to get them right, and I want to get that right. And then so what I would do is i just implement that on the hair. I even was known, right? This is crazy, so when I think about it, it's a bit obsessive. But again, obsession is the only 100%. thing that's going to get you to where you want to get. Absolutely. So what I would do is if there was a haircut, like we've all been there, right? You've done a haircut, you knew you could have done it better, and it bugs the shit out of you, right? It mm. bugs you so much. So what I would do is sometimes, not obviously all the time, but sometimes I'd be like, text them, in two, three days, let me come back and let me do your hair again. Because what all the mistakes that was there would still be there. Like mm -hmm. I'd still be able to kind of see them. So I'd be like, come back, let me do it. And they'd be like, you sure? I'd be like, yeah, a fresh enough's not gonna hurt them. It's free. Like again, it gets your clients on board with your dreams. Mm -hmm. And because they're showing you're showing you want to grow and you want to progress. Yeah. And that's where, let's say, for example, when I said the those evenings I would spend at home mm -hmm. after work doing extra haircuts. I would invite people whose hair I either like that, knew I could do better, or knew I needed to sort of like refine how I move through a process and how I worked on it. I would just pick people and go, next time you want a haircut, let me know, give me a text. I'll do it after work, I'll do it for free. I'll get you a beer, do whatever, you chill, let me, let me cut your hair, let me practice. That's facts. You, know what is, you said it, obsession, and right off the bat, just basically based off what you just said, I can guarantee you 99 point, no, 95% of barbers don't, or anyone hair size don't do that. No. I feel like a lot of people, based off my 24 years of experience, maybe 17 years behind a chair, that when people clock out, they clock out. Mentally they, clock out. They go play That's games, the they go hang out at the bar, they go do other stuff. Me, um, dude, when I clocked out at the shop, at any shop that I was in, now was my time. Mm -hmm. And hearing you say all the stuff that you said, I'm like, yeah, now I hire people to come and shoot with me, my models and all that, because I was focusing on Lowe's Cut It, now no longer working for official cuts. When I was at official class, I handled business. Mm -hmm. Who's next? How you doing, sir? Yeah, come in. All right. After eight o'clock, all right, this is what crazy stuff we're going to do. Mm -hmm. I got this cool idea. And it goes to the obsession part because who cuts hair from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., closes down, and then from 9 p.m., I'm shooting of photos mm -hmm. and cut and doing that till you four in the morning. Be obsessed. Obsessed. Be obsessed, obsessed, man, to the yep. point where people think you're crazy. It, yeah. it, I'm sure you probably got that, like, you're crazy. 100%. Like, people would <laughs> always say to me, like, one of the things that, like, I've spoken to a lot of people about, like, when we did Salo International in England, right? Like, mm -hmm. I think when I grew, right, because I grew quite fast, and I think people weren't, if you, unless you've been and seen what we're actually doing with our education, you kind of wouldn't know why a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. 
I think there was there was always a lot of animosity from the UK. Mm-hmm. Like, there was a lot of animosity from the UK, like not in a horrible way, but in sometimes there was in a horrible way. I'd get trolled a lot because of the mentality talking, from the mindset, from the positivity I was trying to bring. And I think people probably saw it and I, I kind of get it because when I think about it, right, I went from being a, a young kid just literally starting to cut hair, really passionate, really obsessed with cutting hair mm-hmm. that everyone was fully supporting, right? To then, within a year, I was teaching. Mm-hmm. And I feel like people, and when I think about it quite rightly almost, right, were kind of like, now does this kid who a year ago I was really supporting because he was just literally starting to cut hair. Now a year in, I'm supposed to be thinking of him as someone to look up to. And that was, for me, that was never the case. I never wanted that. Yeah. But I felt like that was the animosity that I kind of I kind of got with that. Whereas then I feel like the the, the positivity stuff, now they've kind of come around to us. Speaking to a lot of people at Silent International and what they kind of said was a lot of people who were saying like, I used to think you were crazy, right? <laughs> they were like, I used to think you were literally crazy mm-hmm. because you would tell us all this stuff. And I just thought you were this kid who was obsessed. And in, in reality, they thought I was essentially chasing clout and chasing mm. sort of like the, the fame aspect of it. When well, I feel like when you come to our classes and you realize what I'm really like, like you said, like I'm just trying to give as much value as I yeah. can. And I, don't, I, you know, I don't think you come off as clout. I think a no. lot of your content is very genuine. Um, I, I know definitely now. Yeah, it's very cell phone, very straight to the point. And I think a lot of people, especially now in today's world, that content is what hits harder. No one really cares mm-hmm. about the super pro cam and exactly. all that. You know, so the, I was hearing you talk about how you only record six second clips or somewhere around that realm. Um, and there's a reason because people's attention span isn't mm-hmm. what it was. So people don't understand when you shoot something so raw, just like finishing up your haircut and um, and Pacino, you know, I'm, I'm sure yeah, Pacino, yeah. Pacino put this in the best way. He said, nowadays you have to give them quick Cell phone, cell phone. It's okay to once in a while have that movie, that that, yeah. that production, but every other thing in between, quick, exactly. make it to the point. And when you said that, it's like me being who I am, it's so hard. I have to break myself down to move backwards mm-hmm. because I've worked so hard to master the art of great production. Mm-hmm. Not master, let me rephrase that, just to understand it. Yep. To understand it, to be good at it, great photos, and then to just stop that and then move backwards and just shoot with my phone, I'm like, ooh. So yeah. that's what's been hard for me, but at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's part of evolving. It know? is. I think that social media is evolving so much, it changes so much that now, like, as you said, it's almost like a step back. Like, we just addressed this in the class, right? We addressed this the other day. And I think it's like, when, let's say, like, we first started Instagram properly, right? Especially for me, when I first came into the industry is when Instagram started to, to, to go, right? And started to boom for barbers. And I feel like back then, it was... In a way, easier to blow up because if you just had a good camera and took a good photo of a good haircut, you could blow up. Was it the same thing for England? Um, I mean, my bad. For the UK, back so barbering back in my day wasn't cool at all. It was, no. was it the same for you guys? Yeah, yeah 100%. Okay, so 100%. Instagram helped. Yes, yeah, so Instagram okay. helped massively. And there was a point where if you just had a camera and you could take a good shot, it probably would blow up right, and do relatively yeah. well. But within that realm, though, there was still the idea. And I think for the first, like, what the la- like, apart from the last year or so, I'd say it was very much always the case of good actual good work is what would get your reputation, mm-hmm. right? Whereas when we addressed this recently, the, the way that social media has changed now, it doesn't even need to be good quality work. But this is where I often have that discussion with people of what's your excuse then? Mm. Not to say that don't focus on getting your work as good as you can, you should, as good as you can. But if you want to utilize social media as, a, as what it really is, which is an online marketing platform, mm-hmm. for when you're talking from a business point of view, then now there is no excuse. The playing field is being completely leveled. Yeah, right? You don't even need to be good at cutting hair anymore for you to blow up on social media. You just need to know how to make good content, make it short, sharp, and catchy. 100%. And it's like now for people, I'm like looking at them and they're going, okay, my goal is to make social media like this and this and this. I want to do this. I want to use it as a, as a, as a platform. Now it's like, just go do it. Before it was harder. You had um, to, you'd have to invest in getting better at cutting hair. You'd have to practice time and time again to do this. The reality is now you can sit on your phone and make great content from it. 100%. At, at the shop all day. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? 100%. Uh, so I want to introduce our, our secondary guest. Um, now, you know what, Josh? I'm going to let you introduce him okay. you know, for us. So the guy joining us now is Scott. So Scott McKee is um, new to our team. He's been a member of what we've been doing for a long, long time, for I'd say but two two years now, right? Um, and he actually this year won a online academy competition for Barber of the Year. Now, what Scott's coming on board to do is to really help us, right? To help to, to implement us a corporate structure into our business so we can start to run things really, really well because of what we're going to get to later is some big, big news, mm-hmm. right? 
But Scott is also phenomenal at cutting hair. He's a great person and he's becoming a great friend. And he's someone who I think is going to help us to help people a lot more. Because one of the things we say about our, our competition, in terms of the end of year competition we do, we have a whole like, like whole different entry categories for our competitions for our online academy. But our Barber of the Year one, I think is the one that a lot of people get confused about. Because mm. Barber of the Year makes it sound like you've got to be the best at cutting hair. Yeah. Not to say that Scott isn't good at cutting hair, he is. But our Barber of the Year competition is who's going to help us to help you more mm. in terms of our students. Who, and in reality, what we needed right now was someone who can help teach cut hair, knows the curriculum very well, but also someone who can help us to really legitimize ourselves as a business so that we can run stuff so that we can long-term help everyone else. So other than that, I'm going to let Scott introduce himself a little bit. Yeah, so Scott McKee, um, been with Josh or the Academy for about two, two and a half years or so. Um, really starting, sorry about yeah, that. Yeah. You're good, you're good. Uh, you know, not used to this whole mic thing. <laughs> uh, you know, 24 years in the IT business, so working my way out of the corporate world, really. Okay. Um, hair cutting has just been a passion of mine. Uh, I cut on the side in the military when I was in the military years and years ago. Uh, and so really, um, you know, chased the money when I got out of the military. So I went into the IT space, mm -hmm. um, really didn't want to do it, but was, was supporting a family. And uh, so it was really about six years or so ago, um, I got an opportunity um, with a local barbershop where I was living down in Bloomington, Illinois, actually. And uh, just talking to him, old school barbershop, uh, said, you know, I really loved cutting hair when I was in the military, would really like to do it. They said, well, you know what, we'll put a third chair in if you, uh, if you go back to barber school, we'll put a third chair and let you cut part-time if you want to cut wow. part-time. And how so old were you at this point? Six years ago, so what am I now? 36 at the time. Look at that, man. Or, yeah, no, 46. Jeez. Oh, shit. <laughs> he just shaved yeah. 10 years off. I was, like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, again, uh, some sense of urgency, but um, really just started plugging away. So I've been cutting part-time for about four and a half years now, so splitting time between, you know, a 40, 50, 60-hour work week in the corporate world working 20, 30 hours a week in the barbershop. Uh, and then here recently, just mm -hmm. even opened up a studio in my home so that I could do some of the cutting Josh is talking about where I could really work on perfecting the craft. And, and uh, That's awesome, and, dude. So. Really blows my mind about his story. Like, I think that people who aren't barbers would find it very hard to comprehend mm -hmm. leaving a corporate job that, like, it's corporate world. is yeah, going to be good money. Yeah, guarantee. Yeah. Yeah. And leaving that to, to, to do barbering, I think to a lot of people would blow their mind. But this is when I often say, like, things in life about how they make you feel, not what they are. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why, and we get trolled for it, but there's a reason why barbers get tattoos of clippers and scissors and barber poles, right? Because our tattoos that we have are often a representation of who we are as a person and what we really love, right? And there's a, as I said, there's a real reason why we have these tattoos is because barbering makes us feel good. Hell yeah. And that story really kind of really encaptures that feeling that we get from it because it's like, why else would you leave something? Yeah, it goes back to what you were saying, right? Success. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's a feeling. So yeah, you were killing in the corporate world, right? Yep. But maybe that didn't fulfill you enough. Maybe you transitioning to just, you know what, cutting hair just give you that fulfillment of not only are you happy, mm -hmm. but you, you also feel successful. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then dude, I mean, I'll tell you like this, working next to Josh, I mean, dude, you know what I mean? Like, the, like we like to say in Spanish, is like, que mas quieres? In other words, it's like, what else you want, bro? Right. <laughs> so right. so it, it just, it's just it's so inspiring to, to people because, listen, I'm sure you get this, Josh. I've traveled enough times all over the world to get asked this question so many times. Do you think I'm too old to start cutting hair? <laughs> and I'm like, hell no. Nah. Why? Well, how old are you? Yeah. Like, oh, 30, 40, 50. I'm like, dude, cutting hair is... The only the only thing I could see that it would be a problem is the whole physical aspect on mm -hmm. it, right? Can you stand for eight hours? Can you do this? But at the end of the day, I mean, if you do it for a couple hours, you have to. I know for a fact when I cut hair, I can't do it now. Twelve hours in my feet? No, not anymore. Because I've been, I haven't stopped. I, it's been like almost five years since I stepped out from fully working behind Why don't a chair. Once you stop, it's yeah. just impossible to get. Back but before, when I was doing, dude, 15, 18, 20 heads a day for five days in a row. I mean, I was young. I had zero. I would do that and then go home, get ready, and go to the club and do that, standing mm -hmm. on my feet for another. Now, hell no, right? Uh, so that's the only issue that I would see. But, man, and it, I mean, it, a walk, a run, anything that's physical, if it makes you happy, it's good. you're not going to feel it. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, how do you feel um, at your age now? Not that that's a problem, but how do you feel knowing that you're, you're transitioning from that corporate world 
and I know you have your game plan. Um, it, it wasn't just you quitting and saying, I'm going to start cutting hair. Yep. You have a game plan on how you're going to go about the transition. Does, uh, I don't want to seriously say, does your job know? But Absolutely. The, Absolutely. They're aware of all that. Yep. Great. Um, tell us that story, man. How, what made you just, I know you said military cutting, but what really made you make that decision? Uh, that's a good question. Um, it really kind of boiled down to just getting to a stage in my life where, um, you know, feeling fulfilled, feeling that success, being happy. Um, you know, it, 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 it's not successful if you're making a ton of money, but you come home and you're an ass to your family every night. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no. You know, if you're jerk to your family every night or you're grumpy or you don't want to be, you know, people don't want to be around you. And that's, that's really where, where I was at, just unhappy. Um, not fulfilled, um, and when I really thought back to a period in time, you know, when I when I felt like that, it was being able to sit down with people, cut their hair, talk to them, learn about them, help them, right, listen, um, provide, you know, thoughts. So, really, when I thought about something that I would enjoy doing, um, that's what came to mind, and Barb so, th and then so that's where I really started talking with the owner of this barber shop and asking him about the barber school that was local to our city and. Um, my wife just said, you know, you've talked about this forever, just do it. And so she, you know, she really pushed and supported me. So I, I'm so thankful for that. Um, but even for her, I think, you know, even all the hours and, and uh, extra training and extra studying and, you know, flying different places, take classes. Um, I always think she thought it was kind of just a side thing mm -hmm. until we were at the award ceremony this mm -hmm. year. We flew over to the UK and um, attended. And I think it clicked for her that. Was now, it the legend one? Legends? No, that this was in, that was in Chile. This was our one. We we actually threw our own hair show. Oh, oh, the one with CJ was there. Yeah, yeah dude, yeah. I was that was fire. That was another thing where people really kind of went, okay, this is legit now. Like this is a thing. People... You got Basio cuts over there. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so I didn't know how did I mean how did you guys meet? Literally, it was you know. So again, I was just thirsty for knowledge. You come out of barber school, you learn enough to pass the state board, um, pass the test, um, but I wanted. to I'm a perfectionist, so I, you know, I want to be as good as I can be no matter what I'm doing. Um, so I started taking a lot of class. I've take, taken classes from Chris, Basio, flown, flew into Tampa to take classes with him. Where are you from originally, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, Sterling, Illinois. Oh, okay. So, yep. And so um, I still was craving the why. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why am I pulling the hair to this place? Why am I elevating it? What is that doing for me if I run into this situation? What, what are the tools that I have in my arsenal to react to be able to fix it? Mm -hmm. uh, and I came across Josh, and I listened to a live, I think it was on Instagram or Facebook, mm -hmm. where he was describing this online academy that he had started. Yeah, you didn't really follow me. Or no, not, not like, to that point. That I would want you to. Like, it's like you didn't really know of me before. Right. It wasn't like you'd follow it for a while, seen it, and be like, came across I'll take the jump and do it. It was a case of he just watched the live. I watched the live, and I asked a couple questions. And from hearing the just the transparent responses and the authenticity in what he was saying um i think i literally signed up that night for no the way. for the online academy and and that's kind of where the journey began mm -hmm. and it kind of took off yeah yeah i signed up for your online academy and um i think with me i was always trying to watch it and be like in between like the uber ride from the airport to yeah. the hotel mm -hmm. and to me, and I've said this before to a lot of people, is like there's different learners, right? There's people that, that are amazing at school and like school mm -hmm. and can sit and go through a lecture. And then there's people like me that just, let me just watch you. Mm -hmm. I'll watch you, I'll learn. So a lot of the stuff I think I had to get through was a lot of talking. Mm -hmm. So I would brush it off quick because I'm like, all right, do you know what? I got to focus on what yeah. haircut I'm going to do tomorrow. So I brushed it off, I brushed it off. But now I had to physically be, and I seen you in London, and I know a lot of people tell me all the time, oh, Lois, I'm going to sign up for your class, or I'm going to sign up for this, and then they never sign up. Mm -hmm. So when I seen you in London, it was like the third time I tell him, yo, I'm going to sign up in Chicago. Mm -hmm. The only issue with me was you kept moving the dates. Yeah. So the first time you did it, I wasn't here. And then you moved it, I still wasn't here. Then you moved it again, and I'm like, wait, I think I'm here that week. Yeah. So when I finally found out it was that week, and we found out together mm -hmm. in UK, I was like, dude, I got to do it. And, and I did it, and it, it took me to go to your class today to truly understand that I have to listen to all that mm -hmm. for me to literally understand I think the rest. It's a very good point because like a lot of people when they join up to the online academy, for example, like they, a lot of people are more sort of like at first at least to soak in the initial information and to open their mind up to pay more attention. 
need to kind of see it in person too sometimes. I find a lot of people who have maybe signed up, knew they kind of would like it, but haven't really paid that much attention to it, come to an in-person. And then immediately I'm like, right, if you go watch that stuff now, yeah. you'll get it. 100%. Like you'll just get it. And it, like one thing I would say though is like, and you probably do similar things, but honestly, if it's the talking parts, watch in 10 minute increments. Just watch 10 minutes, focus on getting that 10 minutes in and just leave it then. Mm -hmm. Because if you think about, I've got to watch this whole video of Josh talking for an hour, mm -hmm. right? It, to some people, they'll want that and they'll just sit engaged for the hour. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm like too. I'd be the kind of person where I'd watch 10 minutes, be like, sick, got it. <laughs> then my mind would start going, because what happens to me when I read audio books, right? When I do anything like that, when I listen to podcasts, like it ignites fires in me, which is good. That's what it's supposed but to be. That's the use of it. And my mind starts thinking, okay, six. So now how am I going to make my life do this? Yeah. How am I going to get into this? How am I going to start implementing that now and doing this? And the whole oh, time the podcast yeah. is going. Exactly. Yeah. And then I'm like running on the treadmill thinking, oh, fuck, I've only listened to the first two minutes. Like <laughs> I haven't taken anything else from this and you got to rewind it back. That's yeah. so I, I'm exactly so, the same. Yeah, same. So, like literally even now, like you're telling me a story and if something hits or, or sparks, uh, sparks a nerve, I'll be like, I wonder how I can come away. Yeah. So snap out of yeah. it, listen to my man. I'm the exact same. Yeah, so, exact same. This is why I'd rather just be visual because as I'm watching you, I can think of all those things yeah. as I'm watching you. It's crazy. So you get it. And I, I'm sure a lot of people out there get it. But that's a cool story, man. I wish you the best. You Thank are you. in Appreciate great it. hands. I, I, I'm sure you already know that. Um, I'm excited to ever see you one day to cut, to kind of see how far you've come along from what's it been officially behind the chair now, be, not, not including the military. Yeah, four and a half years behind the four chair. Four and a half years. Nice. How do you feel about those four and a half? Do you feel like you're, is there anything you feel you have trouble with right now? Uh, absolutely. I mean, I think I think no matter how good you are, you can always continue oh, to be better. Facts. Um, but but yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely things that you know we were talking about yeah. uh, with Josh today. Actually, when we go to to London for our educator training in January, mm -hmm. I told him there's certain things you know, but my fades are okay, but I want them to be just banging, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Blurry. Um, so that's definitely one of the things that I want to work on. Um, but yeah, definitely a, a list of things. That's just to, just to continue to work on. I gotta ask you this, Josh. So. Being an American barber, we I know how American barbers feel, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of the, like uh, anyone who, that I, this is how I feel. Right? Anyone who who is deep in the game in the industry should know that a lot of the trends that are hitting America are coming from the UK, mm -hmm. from that whole area, and it's really cool because, like I said, anyone that truly knows knows. Your average barber in an American barber shop is probably still doing fades and a lot of the stuff that we've been doing mohawks and you know all those also the comb overs. Mm -hmm. um, so we've always had this five years ago, seven years ago, where we would always be like, all right, UK barbers are sick with their shears, but they got to work on their blends. Mm -hmm. American barbers, we can blend and do beards, but we got to work on our shears. Mm -hmm. And it was always this, you know, like that was the talk here, at least to my knowledge. What's the talk in UK about us? That you can fade. That we can fade? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it's, um, to killers. be honest, like it depends though. Like, I feel like I have such an affinity with the States and like like one of my best friends are American. Like, do you know what I mean? So like, I feel like I kind of feel like I'm almost American a yeah, little you're, bit. Yeah, you're part of this side. So it's like, when I look at it, what the difference I see, right? And so the difference I talk to sort of my boys in the shop about is about the idea of like why you guys can charge more. Mm -hmm. What you guys as a society value barbering as compared to what our society values barbering as. I'm not going to lie. When you said 30 pounds, I was like, what? Mm, and that's expensive for us, right? And in the town that we're in especially. And for me, what it is, is mostly it's service, right? Mm -hmm. It's the service and it's how you guys know how the, like how you're making them feel is important, right? And it's not to say that in the UK, they don't value service. They do, of course. But what it is, is the general population don't view going to the barbers as, a, as, a, as like, like an exclusive yeah. Thing, right? It's a delight. Gonna, yeah, that they're gonna pay more. It's a chore. Exactly. Yeah. They're just going to get their hair cut. They're not going to see their barber. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like a lot of American people, they want to go see their barber. It's a flex out here. Yeah. Yeah. Like people, like so, like I, I'll get random calls in the middle of the night, and be like, <laughs> they'd be like, you see, I told you, Lowe's is my barber. <laughs> Lowe's my barber. Lowe's, come on. And I'm like, dude, I'm in bed. Like, yeah. I appreciate. It. But so it's a flex out here. People yeah. care who cuts their hair. And I think that like that it's something that I'm trying to like implement into the guys, to try to show and bring value to people beyond just the haircut. And it, like having real good conversations with people, helping people through stuff, right? It's something that again, like it's not that it never happens in the UK. I just don't think the general population is aware that it's a thing that barbers are supposed to, that the barbers do do, mm -hmm. right? And I feel like the way I talk to the guys back home, and this is what our hair show was very much about, right? Our hair show that we threw in the UK, like 
in reality, business sense, I should have thrown it in the States. Mm -hmm. Because the States is our biggest market. It's mm -hmm. where I have the biggest relationships, biggest networks, everything, right? I should have thrown it in the US. But we threw it in the UK because what I want to do is help. I want to help change the culture out there a little bit more so that, that barbering is seen as more of a valuable thing, mm -hmm. right? So that, like, because in reality, the, the, it starts with us. Like, and I feel like here, like in the States, maybe, I don't know, from what I've gathered, it was like 15 years ago ish, people started to really start to implement uh, the idea of putting value into what they were doing because they wanted to charge more as a whole. Mm -hmm. And it's obviously there's still places here that still charge not very much and they're still like working like, a little bit like a chop shop, right? And that's going to happen, right? Because every like people with less money need to get the haircut somewhere. Always going to happen. But as a general industry, it is elevated in the States a lot more than it mm. was 20 years ago, 15 years ago. Thanks. Whereas I, in I, the US, we start, in the UK, sorry, we're starting that process. Yeah, so do you just took the words out of my mouth. That's what I was going to say. I'm not... I was going to say, no way, shape, or form do I feel like is U.S. ahead. No, I just feel like at one point we were looked like that's how it was. Like People are like, you're charging how much for hair? 30 bucks, 40? Hell no, dude. I, there was a time we used to charge 12 bucks for a haircut and 15 if you want to get a razor line. Mm -hmm. Because those $3 were crucial. Mm -hmm. And you would have, hey, man, you know that, that, that raise the line, it will last a little longer. Yep. And people would be like, oh, all right, man, all right, run it. And then, yeah, you know, it's tough crazy. now. Dude, you guys are making hundreds of dollars exactly. cutting hair. So to us, it's, it's crazy. Like when I started cutting hair at the shop I worked in, it was seven pounds a haircut. <sighs> seven pounds, not even, not even ten dollars. It's about maybe it's about ten dollars with the conversion, but like that was it. And like you had to do thirty haircuts a day. What was the style of haircuts back then? To be honest, I mean, in reality, I don't think it, it has changed. But I feel like if you go to, if I went back to that shop that I was in, it wouldn't have changed that much. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? If I went back to like the demographic of where you're cutting, who you're cutting, I don't think it's changed that much. It has in a way. People kind of care a bit more about the hair. People maybe have slightly longer styles, right? The crop came and went. The crop was one of the biggest things, right? Oh, it was so big. The crop yeah. came and it hasn't gone completely, but like, I mean, it's gone a little bit more. People don't just want no fringe anymore a lot of the time. And they want a slightly longer styles. Like COVID kind of implemented the idea of maybe tapers coming in a little bit more with longer styles. But even so, like, I think in the day-to-day -day barbershop environment, I honestly don't see a huge, huge difference in most of the countries I've been to. Mm. Like, it's the general population. People have normal haircuts. Like, in the UK, like our barbershop, for example, right, it isn't probably what people think it's going to be. It's not just long flow and scissor cuts all day, every day. It's a normal community barbershop. Mm -hmm. Most of the people, yes, some of the higher-paying clients have full, full scissor cuts, longer haircuts, longer styles, care a lot about their hair. But most people just have a one, two, or three on the sides, short, on short scissor cut on top, right? Then, like, we would maybe go through and give them more of an exclusive service. They get a hair wash, they get their hair styled, like, fully, like, they get a bit of relaxation, they get, like, maybe if they want a steamer on, like, they, we get different versions of our service that we can offer. But in fact, the haircuts still, probably the same haircuts are the most common here. Mm -hmm. Like, it, I, I often think that there's obviously this perception, but it's like, it's, the reason why is because if you look on Instagram, why don't you search UK barbers? Like you're probably not gonna get the local barber who owns a little corner shop on, on, on in like a really small town, right? That like he never uses Instagram, so there's nothing <laughs> on there. You know what I mean? You're not gonna get that. You're gonna start getting the names that you would be accustomed to seeing when you type in UK barbers. Mm -hmm. Like the same as we were to type in US barbers, I know that you probably know a bunch of people who can't fade. Yeah. Like, and it's not to say that's bad on them. I mean, it's just the case of the perception that we have in the UK isn't gonna be accurate for everybody. Mm -hmm. It's the same as you would have here. It doesn't mean that everyone in the UK can cut with the scissors. Because I know so many places you can go and get your hair cut that be terrible. Yeah. Oh yeah. So it, it's, it's crazy. Just watching these two days in your class just changed so much about how I, I'm gonna start moving now when it comes to my shirt cutting, um, which is intense because it's just all I needed was that key that mm -hmm. to unlock that door to think the way you guys think, not to see it. Um, and now I look. I, I think like literally, so it goes back to me wondering off. I seen your and I'm watching you cut hair and I'm learning and I'm learning and I'm just thinking to myself of like, dude, 80, 85, 90 percent of these barbers that I know, uh, whether they're in Chicago, all over the nation, like can't cut hair with scissors for anything. And some of these people are really, really big, but it just it just took me to that. I was like, holy crap! Like, and to until today, I got the I I, I understood it. But I didn't know why. I couldn't. Here's what. Here was my biggest excuse. This is the best way to put it. Could I cut that hair? Could I do it? Of course. Mm -hmm. But can I teach it? Nope. Exactly. I couldn't teach it. The biggest challenge I set to people, right, is about teaching haircuts. I always say to students, as well, say it on an academy. Explain it to people. 
Like on the second year of our online academy, we have a whole thing about educator training. Now, a lot of people might not want to be an educator, may skip it. But what really is important for most people is what you really take out of it. Like the way I'm structuring my courses is no matter what you want to achieve, you should be able to take something from every single thing that you're mm -hmm. doing. Right. So if you take if you looked at our educator training program, right, it's not just going to help you to learn how to teach. Like if you can teach it, it means you fucking know it. Mm -hmm. Like Facts. it means that you're, and again, we said most barbers, all they really care about is proving something to themselves. Yeah. So if you know you can teach it, it means that you know you can comprehend every single thing that you did. Every movement you did, you knew why you were doing it. Mm -hmm. What more level of control do you want than that? Exactly. Like that's what we want. And so when we go in and saying, right, you go and prepare, you got a little apprentice or you got a guy who's just starting out in your shop. He's like one year in, go teach him some stuff. Facts. Just, yeah. The, just I, talk literally, through it with him. I became way more, I felt so much more powerful after today. Sick. Because you did the mala yesterday, and that was cool. That was awesome. Um, I love how you just exaggerated on it. Because to me, I was like, all right, of course I'm going to size it up. Like, all right, how would I do it? Mm -hmm. And not in the sense of steps, in the sense of how would my finished product look like yeah. compared to what Josh did. And what you did, it was just like, oh, that was sick. But just like anything else, right? You watch it once, it'll impact you, but it doesn't really sink in until today. Mm -hmm. Then I seen you do the pompadour slash mother. And I was like... Wow, just that alone is a strong foundation for five other haircuts. Exactly. So based off those two cuts, I'm able to understand how to do 10 haircuts. Exactly. And if you start implementing some of the creativity you put through that. Right. right. So this is why dude, I, I had no shame. I'm telling you, Chicago should have showed up. When you, you have a legend like a legend in the making, because he's not even you're not even done yet. When you have someone like Josh coming to Aurora, Illinois, <laughs> and you fail to to attend in my, I mean, did you have a limit in your class? Uh, kind of. We were. Yeah, right. We, you don't we, want hundred people in there. We were. We were at the limit, so we like we were actually sold out. Like mm -hmm. Chicago, that always shows love. Oh, like it's... last time was packed in Chicago. Yeah, yeah the, the class. That we, the, you talking about the one I went to, right? No, we had one last year as well. So we had a, a three day course last year. Similar amount of people to this one, but like I know for a fact that like Chicago always shows love, and I think if we like start to plan on putting on some bigger courses, we get bring out all of our educators out. We can really show. Uh, put up some big classes. You here. want to tell them where you plan on having 2023? So, I think you can tell them. <laughs> All right, so nothing official yet, but, you know, it, it's just something that we just kind of talked about. I invited Josh it's, to... It's, it's official. Oh, it's a, 2023, guys. So, um, for, those of you, for those of you guys that don't know, uh, for this class that he's having now, I reached out to him and I wanted to invite him to headquarters and host it here because, obviously... This place is built for something like that. This is why I built it for my personal classes mm -hmm. and my master classes. And he had told me he already made a, he already had a, somebody booked and it was okay. So today he came and saw it and he was like, this is definitely what we got to do it mm -hmm. next year. So 2023, we obviously don't have a date yet, unless you have a date in mind. No, because the, some of the bigger news is we're moving to the States. Oh. So 2023, we're going to be moving. We've set up our business here. We're moving we're working on finalizing everything to do with uh, all the logistics. But 2023, from hopefully the summer onwards, we're going to be here permanently uh, building an academy down in Tampa, but like predominantly touring for the first first period because we want to be able to reach out to people, make it more accessible. That was sick. And as you're saying, Chicago, this is the place. Headquarters 2023. We will announce that we might even have you for season two on the podcast because I, I plan on doing a season two after I finish my first 12. Um, and by season two, it's just... I mean, this space is big, so I don't. I don't always want to have my podcast in this area. Bro, there's, there's multiple areas where we could have and host it for a season two, um, and upgrade that as well. Shout out to my team. I wouldn't, Josh. Don't think that I came in here and built this shit. Like <laughs> I literally had to make sure we were good with you, and then these two guys right here made it work. You know, and you Appreciate know, you it all. It's all the behind the people, the behind the, the scenes that people don't understand. This is why I wanted you to bring Scott and Kendrick because. It's not just you that's running this entire operation. You have your team, 100%. you have your wife, you have a team of educators. Um, and now you're coming to the States, and I think that is the smartest move um, business-wise, in my opinion. You know, um, one of my biggest... So I, I, I try to think, like, I was telling myself this earlier when I was driving. I was like, man, this guy, to him, he's doing an international tour in America. So to him, he's international. He's abroad. There's so many people I know here in the States that are that love your work, that are big fan, whether you met them or not, that mm -hmm. just know who you are, that love your work. And that feeling of seeing that it was just like, man, that is that must feel so cool because I'm only looking at it from 
I want to. I would love to one day go to UK and do a tour international Bro, over there, right? You got a place to go in Birmingham anyway. So, th thank you, man. My point to that was, I start sit here, and you know, a, a lot of people do this. I, I started comparing myself, and I'm like, man, you know, what do I got to do to not only have a tour in the UK, but also sell out, mm -hmm. you know? But then I started. Stop, I stopped paying attention to what I didn't have, and I started focusing on what I do have. Mm -hmm. And in that same drive, I'm driving home, and I'm like, but wait, I've done international stuff. I've been to Latin America, Colombia. I've been to Hong Kong. I've been, um, I mean, the list goes on, that I, places that I've done, but just because it was in the UK, it was more Latin America, I somehow brushed it off mm -hmm. like it was nothing. But then I'm like, wait a minute, Los. You've gone to Peru where people are crying to meet you, mm -hmm. where you're where you're walking around this big hair show in Peru and you're noticing a magazine being passed around and you're in the cover of that magazine. And I'm like, what the hell is this? I'm like, mm -hmm. is this legal? Like, are these guys <laughs> like? Mind you, I'm in a different country. I don't know. Is this right? Is this not right? So when I when I when I have to bring myself back to that, I'm like, oh, dude, I am blessed. You know, yeah. I could do an international, maybe not necessarily in UK yet, but everywhere else. So how does it feel, man? Because I can tell you straight up, people out here in America love you. Love your work, respect your work. You, there's a top five when it comes to UK barbers. Um, I'm sure you know the top five, the list. Uh, you know, you got your um, Kevin Lutchman, you got your Josh LaMonica, um, which are really good. I've heard, I haven't attended personally their precision cutting, but the way you do your thing, I can tell. And this is me saying it, bro. Mm -hmm. I, I felt it. When I realized that you build your own curriculum, I was like, yo, this is the next Sassoon right here. And that's that's what I said, because Vidal Sassoon is obviously known for what? Mm -hmm. Doing it his way, his own way. He didn't follow anything else. He, he It was his own. And this is literally what you did, man. You reinvented the wheel. Appreciate that. So a lot. In, in your time, in five years, 10 years, and when whatever you aspire to be, at the end of the day, man, today, right now, I'm calling it. You're <laughs> the next fucking Sassoon. And I, and I hate that I just cursed right now, but that, that just shows my passion for it because it's one thing that I um, that I feel like I'm a, I'm good at doing is finding talent. I see something in people, you know. A well, lot of you people did five years ago. Yeah, when I and you know you had to remind me. I called you and I was trying. I was like, Yo, you don't know me, Rob the original. You're familiar with Rob? Mm -hmm. Same thing. I called him, threw him on my Blueprint DVD in 2012. Nobody knew who Rob was. I knew who Rob was because I have a thing where if I spot something. That I'm like, wait a minute. Not only have I never seen something like this, it makes me feel some way. Mm -hmm. Let me let me let me work with him. Instead of Not being like instead time. of being like, oh, screw him. I could do that yeah. better. No, no, no. Let me work with you. Let me get yeah. what I can so I could build myself as well. Mm -hmm. And that's what I see in you, man. I Appreciate think you have that, a man. you're very there's a lot you have going on, man. You got a shop, an academy coming, you're moving to the States. Uh, you got this tour, this international tour. Your next stop is is that your final stop, Tampa? No, so our next stop is Seattle. Then we've got we we're not back. We've got like till I mean we'll be here till December. Wait, so after Chicago you're going to Seattle? What's after Seattle? Uh, Salt Lake. No, Boise, Idaho. Then Seattle. No, then Salt Lake. Then we got a bit of a break. Then Dallas. Then Dallas. Then, ta then Tampa. Then Atlanta. Are you, how, how's Dallas looking? What's the date on Dallas? So Dallas isn't. It's not sold out yet. But the only reason that's no, normally Dallas is like sold out months in advance. But I didn't realize because obviously we don't celebrate Thanksgiving. Like at first <laughs> we put the dates on and it was all over Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, right? <laughs> so we shifted dates back a little bit. So then now like, I mean, it's still like, I think it, it's the least booked out of all of them because Tampa's nearly sold out, right? Atlanta's nearly sold out. Um, and so they will. But I mean, it, like Dallas is like 50% at the moment. But I think to be honest... It will sell out, but because of the Thanksgiving thing, it's like... Yeah, of course. Yeah, miss. So what did you move it to? After or before? Before, just before. Oh, yeah, beautiful. So it finishes the day before Thanksgiving. Guys, listen, man, and this goes back to one of my last points that I want to talk about. Um, this is an opportunity for you guys. All of Dallas, Texas is huge, all of Dallas. For you guys to attend such a, such a seminar, such a class. Um, but a lot of people want to sit here, and I'm not saying that's the case, but a lot of people would probably use, oh, what's Thanksgiving? Why would I do it? Listen... Thanksgiving will be back next year. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Let me. So one of the things you said, and this kind of goes back to that, was, um, I'm trying to. I'm just. I can't even find it. So anyway, I'm just gonna say like this. You were talking about 
diligent, right? Being uh, spreading out your work and all that, mm -hmm. and, and working efficiently. And oh no, that's this is what it. See, I was trying to talk about something else. The story you talked about on the first day was the brick. You yes. Lay, you lay one brick at a time. Instead of worrying about this entire wall that you have to build, you lay one brick per day. And every day that goes by, the task doesn't seem like a lot. But eventually, when you look back after a year or so, whatever, when 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 January first hits, you're not thinking about everything you got to do the entire year. You go day by day. My two weeks, my next two and a half, three weeks total from London, dude, I just came back from, and I mean, you can relate to this 100%. I just came back from an international show london came back to work and prep for this event that we had saturday i was up to three in the morning and then went to your class the next day i'm in your class for the next five days and in between that i'm cutting clients and taking care of business because on your last day of your class i have to leave at four o'clock on a dot to get to the airport to fly to dubai to have that world of beauty international hair show mm -hmm. and i'm there for seven days just to come back for one day take care of all my clients and that weekend i have babel is doing another event here once we're done with that event here, I have to um, stay gold. I'm sure you're familiar with stay mm -hmm. gold. Now we're filming something with stay gold. I got a few people flying in. So that week we're doing some content. So um, the point to all that is, you think I'm worried about all that? That's mm -hmm. going to happen in two weeks? Hell no. Nah. What my focus is, is that I'm in Josh's class today and I get what I got to get done today out mm -hmm. the way. So tomorrow can be a better day. 100%. So do I think about it now when I'm breaking it down? I'm like, damn, bro, I got all that to do. <laughs> And it's scary, but the only way I get through it is by just laying that one brick at a time. 100%. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're saying about like strategizing everything you want to do in your life. And that's why writing those goals down that we did the other day is going to be super important, not just for yourself, but for everybody who did that, because it's not very often you get to sit and plan. And as we said, like building the idea of multiple streams of emotional income, multiple streams of fulfillment, like strategizing your life so that you actually see and go, okay, so if I put down, I want an emotional goal to spend an hour like kind of just having some quiet time and appreciating some love time with, with my wife, just watching a movie, whatever. You do that and you set it as a thing you want to achieve. You will go and achieve it, right? You achieving that brings a, a amazing energy to your relationship, mm -hmm. to you as a person, but also helps you get that fulfillment, not just from the energy that you get together and, and, and sort of like the relationship, but also personally you're going, cool, I, I, it sounds horrible, but you're like, I know I'm being a good person. Like, it's not selfish to say that you are actively seeking fulfillment from knowing you're being good mm -hmm. and a good person to be around and giving people good energy and helping people. Like, that's what it's about. It's, all of life is about giving value, I just think. And if you focus on the value you give, the value you get in is just going to go up tenfold. 100%. And if you think about it as energy, like, one of the, the greatest things that I've been saying uh, recently is that uh, as human beings, energy is our currency. Mm. And fulfillment is how we get paid. Mm. And for me, that is the quote to just underpin everything we have in life. Whatever whatever avenue of life you're talking about, the energy that goes into it, right? That's the currency. And the fulfillment is how you're getting paid from it. So you've got to figure out how can I get paid all day, every day. Mm. Make your bed in the first thing in the morning. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And that's all the right. thing. If you have it as your strategy list, you will get paid from it. Facts. That, those are, these are all gems, guys. All right, we're going to close out this episode with Instagram questions. So we got a few mm -hmm. here. Um... Yeah, I mean, you could get into detail, Josh. This is your world. Go crazy. The first one's going to be from Sony. Oh, no. Man, these names, bro. Uh, S-O-N-N-Y-L-I-C-O-N 52. Sony Lincoln 52. They asked, how do you grow your social media in a positive way for your barber career? Okay, so definitely the one thing, and this is, I think we've already said on this podcast, but definitely we said in the class, is about putting out what you want, not what you think the industry wants to see. Mm. Remembering the industry doesn't need what it wants. It needs what it needs, right? And it's like people, we're never going to know what we need until we're given it anyway. Mm. So if you focus on putting out something organic that's you, like in terms of capturing content, you've essentially just got to capture what you already do. Because if you capture what you already do, who you already are, who you want to be, for example, then what's going to happen is you're doing something organic so you can repeatedly capture that content. If you're going out of your way to create something new just to blow up because you want to blow up, not because you want to share your value, then in reality, what if you do blow up? 
Then you got to go and do that again. <laughs> yeah, you then you got to go and get everyone who was in that room back in to throw that like bigger van and do that thing that blew up. Right, great. You got to do the Damn. whole thing again. And that's way more stress. Exactly. It's gonna be so much stressful, so much more stressful to try to continue doing something you didn't even want to do or you did specifically for the reason of blowing up. If you can just post the content of what you want to do, what you already do, and who you are, then you're gonna essentially cultivate a world that already agrees with what you think of, like building clientele. Mm. Like it's the same, it works the same way. You you do the haircut you like, you do you give people your version of their vision and you build a clientele base that 80% agrees exactly with what you think looks good. Wow. And it's the same with social media. Like uh, for me, you can grow fast, you can grow slow, whatever it is, as long as you're growing, like what you're doing is, and the best tip actually, no, the best tip, right, is to understand how things work. Social media, right, the best promotion for any of your businesses will be word of mouth, right? Mm -hmm. Social media is virtual word of mouth, right? So when you're thinking about it, right, you're actually, you're at my class this week, right? Now, if I post me at my class, right, we got, like, we got like, what, 15 students. If I post me in the class, I do my post about it, right? That's great because it's showing people who already follow me the value that we're putting out in the class. They say, see, it's cool, but they already follow me. If I want to expand my world, what's important is for the people who are already in my world to feel enough value from me that they want to share me to their world. Mm. So you posting me, everyone else in the class posting me is going to bring like, you Awareness. might out of your world, like you might have, even with the platforms that we like kind of semi share in a way, like in terms of the Instagram limelight, mm -hmm. you might like only 10% of your followers might actually follow me. Right? So 90% of people who you're sharing this to will look at it and go, Oh, what's this? I'll take a look. Right? You're opening the door. You're kind of giving that verification of like, I fuck with this guy essentially. Mm -hmm. Like I appreciate the value he's giving and I'm, because I'm sharing it, I think that my world would too. Mm. And for everyone, that's what it's about. Like if you just focus on providing value, your world, who is essentially your, your followers you already have, they will open the door to their world. That's going to boost everything that you want to do. Wow, what a great answer. That's a great answer. All right, this one is from the Beard Doctor 007. Also, oh no, I guess this is, she has two questions. Is the Dallas hands-on only watching the techniques? Ooh, we were just no. talking about that. This. No, practical. So there's going to be five days. So there's going to be two and a half days to Is three what, days. What of I'm practical. doing? Yeah. Okay. You'll be all right. <laughs> It'll be worth it. Trust me. Trust me. Uh, Absolutely. 100%. Mm -hmm. And then she, her original question was, she's in the Dallas area. I would like to know more about the course she's having in November. All right. We, I'm sure we answered that already. Yeah. Uh, so leaving a nine to five barbering job from... Chris Cuts underscore BX. What's that? That's all they want to know. How would you go about leaving a nine to five? To get into barbering, essentially. Mm -hmm. No. Oh, damn. I mean, yeah, Scott's the best. Scott, why don't you one. answer that? So yeah, leaving a nine to five for barbering. Yeah. So it's. I mean, it, it, I think the thing, the biggest thing is, is just to keep focused, set the goals, plan your action to achieve those goals. Because if you don't, it's just going to be one of those things where you kind of got in the back of your head, yeah, I'm going to leave mm -hmm. my nine to five. And in and, 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 and all honesty, I think I could have done it faster had I really been carrying through because we talked about that in the class. It's the, the actions, day. right? It's the like, actions. You can have goals from your bed. That's the phrase I've been using. Like yeah. people who say, if for that example, he might be like, I, I love barbering, right? I want to do this. And he's from his bed every night. He's dreaming <laughs> about being in a barbershop every day. But in the morning, he wakes up and goes to his job all day, comes home and dreams again no about being a barbershop every yeah, day. Yeah, no planning. Yep. Yeah, and you can have goals, but I mean, you can do the actions. And right. I think what you've started to do is implement the actions. Start implementing the actions. So for the last, you know, four years, I've been dreaming about it. Been working hard, don't get me wrong. Working, you know, again, the corporate job during the day and working in the barbershop mm -hmm. several days a week. Um, but not really planning exactly what I need to do and then following through on it. Mm. And within the last six months, I really started to see it take off. Then it makes you think like, man, I could have done this 10 years ago. Yeah, gosh, I've absolutely, been absolutely. That's how I feel when I started getting my credit together and my life together. Yep. I was like, man, I could have done this in my early 20s. Why, why did I wait? 100%. But guys, listen, you already know, we could go on for hours, man. But I just I wanted to... forever. Oh, 100%. <laughs> and, and the fact that you were just... I was just telling people, because, listen, we have our little side during lunch and all that, so a lot of people want to give my input. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Is he good? Is he? I'm like, bro, don't worry about what I think. What do you think? Mm -hmm. But I was like, I'll tell you what, a lot of things you guys don't see. I'm like, the skill, the skill it takes to talk for five days straight, <laughs> for six hours straight, and not even, like, not even repeat yourself – that is skill alone because I can get. I told, I told I told one of the guys I'm like I can get you to go up on stage and maybe you might talk for 20 minutes. Maybe you might hold it out for an hour. Maybe, 
But this guy is talking for four or five, six hours straight. He's teaching. Why? Because he's full of knowledge. And these are things that I pay attention to. So I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. I, I'm not just looking at what, what he's doing. I'm, I'm, lo- I'm studying you. You've got a very similar brain to me. You think deeper into things yeah, it's than more the surface. Than... And I think that's what you should do, though. That's how you can really take information. That's yeah. an, like, as you say, me talking, like, this is one of the reasons why I want to, we're opening our mentoring program is because one of my biggest skills is thinking deeper into what I'm seeing, reading people to a deeper level than sometimes they probably even see themselves. Yeah. And I reckon you could do the same to me. You could probably, you probably tell some me stuff about me this week that even I'll be like, okay, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. I mean, nothing bad or nothing, but yeah, no, I, yeah I do. No. I have to, st- just like how you said it today, like I saw who it clicked on and who still needs some work because some of the questions I was getting, I was just like, I, in my head, I was like, oh, I feel so bad for you because you're so lost right now. <laughs> One of the students was like, you know what it feels like? It feels like I'm watching like a live and then I'm trying to read comments in the comment section and they're just like, comments, 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 comments. <laughs> and he's like, I, I can't. And I'm like, damn, how long have you been doing here? He's like, a year and a half. And I'm like, you see me, I can hear him six hours straight and it's not too much. It's a lot, but I can still break it down and, and, and digest it. To him, he was just like, whoa. But I'm like, this is why you should record because mm-hmm. on my way to the shop, to the class today, I recorded your entire cut yesterday. Mm-hmm. So on my way, that whole 45-hour drive, I'm listening to you again. And as I'm listening to you, just like when you watch a movie for the second time, you start to get things you yep. didn't get the first time. So when I got to the class today, it was literally like I just watched you do that mullet mm-hmm. again. So I was refreshed. I knew exactly. And I told him, did you record anything today? He's like, oh, I recorded here and there. But I'm like, you're going to miss stuff if you don't record it. And that's what I was thinking. Like, not just anything in life, right? We're in a virtual world now. Capture stuff. Capture everything. Just get Study, it. Yeah. Because then it lasts forever. And that's the thing, especially with your haircuts, right? Like, there's a lot of haircuts, especially the haircuts that you think you need. The, the haircuts you want to take the photo of the least are the ones you need to take the photo of the most. Because they're the ones when the memory doesn't need, they shouldn't die, right? You shouldn't mm-hmm. forget that memory. Because you, like, if you, if you want to get rid of it and you have that feeling of, I need to get rid of this one now, <laughs> get it out of the chair, see it, get it gone, right? Everyone's been there. Uh-huh. But that's the one that's going to be the most valuable to you moving forward. Like, one, of, one of the things you said was, you said this about writing. I'm not sure exactly what you said about, but it was about writing. You were you saying something about detach the emotional side of it, then come back to mm-hmm. it. So somebody told me that about <clears throat> my work. I would be like, someone asked me, it's like, hey, do you ever just do some work and take photos and you just never post it? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah, but someone back then told me once, listen, you get so emotionally attached. We, we become our own worst critics that anything you do, you're going to see all the imperfection. Mm-hmm. Example, you walked into it headquarters and you were like, wow, this is amazing. And I'm like, oh, I wish I could see what you see because all I see is all the imperfections that yeah. I could have fixed. So they were like, take a picture of your work, regardless if you like it or don't like it. Because two months from now, a week later, when you're not emotionally attached anymore to that, you're going to look at it and you're going to be like, mm-hmm. damn, I never posted this? Why did I post this? This is a fire haircut. But this is the thing. It's about emotions. Like, no decision should be made off of emotions. 100%. You need to wait till your emotions have gone and then make a decision. And like learning to do that, that's the kind of discipline. If you can learn to do that in life, you will have so much more control mm-hmm. over your destiny. So much more. And it goes back to raising your prices. A lot of people don't, yeah. in America, they don't want to raise the price because they're like, oh, I don't want to lose my clients. I don't want this. And I'm like, well, listen then how do you expect to grow a business if you're too emotionally attached? Mm-hmm. Do you think I still cut 24 years in the game? you think I still cut the people I started cutting 20 years ago? Every year I got new people. Why? Because at every level that you go, is, is you, not everyone can rise up with you. Exactly. I, I talked to our apprentices at the shop about this because they were saying like that their apprentices, right, went from five pounds because they were just starting out to 12 pounds, right? Mm-hmm. And they did this recently. And um, one of the guys, um, he... He basically was scared because he was like, well, all my, all my, all my friends, he's only 17. He said, all my friends, they don't, they don't like have that much money. They don't have jobs or anything. I went, yeah, their moms pay for their haircuts. I was like, so they don't need to worry about the money. Like their moms pay for the haircut anyway. You're worth 12 pound now. That is your value. And I was like, and in reality, do you think when you're charging 50, the people who are paying you five are going to be the people who are paying you 50? No, right? Some of the kids, when they grow older and get jobs, will. They'll stay with you on the journey. But I'm like, if you're scared to raise their price now, You'll never raise their price. 100%. And that's the thing with any customer, even if it's from 20 to 30 or 20 to 25, right? If you don't raise it for them, because a lot of people do this, and I've been guilty of in the past before where I've gone, okay, for my law clients, I won't raise them, right? But then I never get to raise them. Like, how, how are you ever going to go and tell them that at that point, then, okay, you know what, today is the day, mm-hmm. you've got to pay me more now. And then they, they, that special treatment they've always got, they've always felt like one of your friends because they're that special treatment has gone completely. Yeah. And in their mind, you've scrapped all the loyalty, 
Oh. And they'll probably leave completely because yeah. it's like now, like because they've they've seen it as a loyal thing, and you keep it at that price, and then all of a sudden it's gone. Yeah. And I'm like, if you if you build the idea of okay, my price is going to increase, some of them will stay with you on the journey, but some of them won't. But you don't need them all because you're gonna get more people in. As but you one said. of the things you do that is what I did. I never like. A lot of people, and I've noticed that people will just cut people off. Oh, you can't afford my price. Yeah. I'm sorry. Merge them into it. Not only that, I redirect it. Mm -hmm. So I talked about this a lot. I was like, all right, hey, Scott, I'm like, you know, starting November 1st, you know, it's no longer 50. I'm going up to 80. One of the big things, don't go up five bucks, 10 bucks, because the ideal is, to me at least, it was never to keep people, it was to release people. Mm hmm. Right, so every time I went booked, up, yeah, if I if I wanted to raise my prices, it was never because I wanted to keep everyone. It was because I needed to get rid of people. Mm -hmm. So that that's what made me do it. But I was like, hey Scott, you know, it's no longer fifty. I'm gonna go up to eighty. Now to you, you might be like eighty. Oh, I can't afford it. Eight, no problem, Scott. Listen, you remember Jack? You know, yep. that used to work with me. Yeah, you know, he he already understands how to cut your hair. He's working next to me. He knows this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell him exactly how I cut your hair, bro. So whenever you want to come in, he'll just take care of you. His prices are still the same. Mm -hmm. Now. What are the odds of, what are the chances now that when Scott has a wedding, a vacation, or he has something he, fun he wants to do, who do you think he's probably going to call? Los. Mm -hmm. I want to get that Los mm -hmm. cut it cut. 100%. Because I never burned the bridge. Yep. It wasn't about letting you go. It was just about, like, let me redirect you somewhere. Yep. Because That's a good point. That's what we do. We kind of bring it down and, like, filter it down to the shop. So they'll just go to the manager who I trained. Right? So where we do it. And for a lot of my clients now, we've actually come full circle. One of the phrases I, I, I started using last year, I really kind of built this idea in my head, right? And realized what I was actually trying to do. And it's that uh, I started for free, I want to finish for free. Mm. And that's what I've actually got to the point now, I'm touch wood, I can keep going, but I'm lucky enough to be able to do that. Like, I still cut my clients, right? And again, this is where it's again, they're not going to leave because they're on the journey with me. I've shared the dream with them the whole time. And now, occasionally, I'll be like, okay, I need models for the academy, yeah. right? For, to show for a class. I just need fundamental haircuts to show the, people, the students in the class how to do these haircuts. Right, okay. All my, all my clients are then, okay, I want one, I want one, I want one. So I can pick my clients. They come in, get a free haircut. They don't get one all the time, but we still have that relationship. They know they're going to get a free haircut from me every now and again. Mm. And they know it's for a class, so they know I'm going to super paying attention to the haircuts. <laughs> like the kind of thing, they know they're helping me out too, but I'm helping them. They're not paying for the haircut. They're getting a free haircut, but they still get to get me get the haircut sometimes. Right. And in the meantime, they go to the guys at the shop. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? So it's not about burning bridges. And I think a lot of people just look at it like, oh, if you don't mess with me, then you're against me. No, it's just, hey, not everyone... If you're leveling up, if you're constantly leveling up, you have to understand not everyone can level up with exactly. you. Exactly. It and won't be the same people. Yeah. So, guys, this is probably the longest episode we've had, <laughs> is it, JC? Hour and a half. Hour and a half. Um, once again, thank you guys, man. Thank you. It's Josh, like real talk, man. It, it is an honor to have you here, bro. It's an honor um, to be here. I to, appreciate it. To, to five years ago when I first reached out to you, to know that today you're here is so dope. I'm excited for the next three days. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm honestly being real, bro. I, I could I could have been done today, and, and people be like, "How's the class?" I'm like, "Worth it." Just <laughs> two days, so I'm excited to see what um, the next three days are coming. You were looking for a medium length hair model, right? Is uh, that what is that what a Kirby I mean, mentioned? I don't know. At this point, I'm only doing one more haircut. I think. Okay. Me but, personally, because it's gonna be practical. Because I literally just looked at JC and I'm like, JC's a medium length. <laughs> <laughs> but <J> <laughs> I mean, we could see how we get on towards the end of the week, maybe yeah. if yeah. we get a bit of free time. Cause it's all good, man. Um, but dude, enjoy your gifts. Enjoy, oh, enjoy the shirts. Um, guys, thank you guys. Uh, thank you so much. This is episode eight or nine. Nine. This is episode nine, guys. In the cut, uh, Barbara Josh OP. You got Kendrick and Scott, guys. Stay tuned for the next one. Let's go. Sick. Like, it was unreal. Like, I feel hyped. Like, I've been teaching all day. It's nearly 9 p.m. And we've been teaching since 10 a.m. So, essentially, I've been talking nonstop since 10 a.m. But honestly, I could have gone all night. Like, we definitely got to get a second episode on this because, like, like we just said, we just covered up more stories just like, ah, oh, yeah. Like, this is what I love the most out of anything in life. It's just talking to people who have similar minds. This is what brings me energy.